Hi, how are you? I feel like I haven't talked with you in a really, really long time. I didn't look to see the exact amount of time, but a couple weeks, three weeks, I missed you and I missed catching up. For those of you that are new here, I'm Michelle. This is my channel, Penny's Daughter Shares, where I talk primarily about cross stitch, although there is also quilting and sewing and other crafts. I'm pretty sure today is all cross stitch. Well, except for talking about some upcoming things that I'm gonna work on. <laughs> Otherwise, it's cross stitch today. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you see. If you do, please click on the like button down below. And if you really like it, please subscribe down below. If you're coming back, welcome back. Thanks for sharing time with me as always. So you're probably wondering why I haven't talked to you in a few weeks. Um, for those of us in the US, we already know all this, uh, for anyone in other countries, you may not be familiar with our tax deadline, which is normally April 15th. This year it was April 18th. And I think that I've talked about it before that Jeff is a CPA. I'm also a CPA. I'm just not practicing right now, <laughs> but he is. And tax season was brutal this year. And we think it was just a combination of factors that I will not bore you with, <laughs> but it was brutal and probably the worst one we've had to deal with. And um, I don't even know how many years we've been going through this, a lot. So we were wrapping up with busy season or Jeff was, and we were just trying to hold ourselves all together in the house because he was working so much. <laughs> He planned his schedule out. He actually wrapped up on April 15th, which was Friday, rather than wrapping up on Monday the 18th. So he was able to wrap up on the 15th. And he then took all last week off and I got to spend time with him because the kids still had school. So I got a lot of time with him. We all did, but I really did because the kids were in school. And we just binge watched a few things and kind of hung out. Um, it was just so nice because it felt like I hadn't seen him in so long. <laughs> so that was kind of the ca quick catch up here. Also, my background probably looks at least a little bit different. Yes, slightly different. Well, one of the things that we worked on while Jeff had the week off was we planned out some more of my craft room. And what you see behind me is one half of what was my work table. And the other one is down the wall, along the same wall. And then he has planned out a whole system of shelving that he's gonna install. So he's ordered everything uh, we're waiting for it to come. And then once it comes, then he can set it up for me. And I can have a lot of beautiful display space. So now I can take my awesome fabrics that I'm collecting and I can see them even if I'm not working with them. So I'm really excited. And I can also put some finishes up here. So you can see them in my background, but I can also enjoy them while I'm in my craft room. So I'm really excited about that, and I will share more as time goes on. Uh, I wanna check my notes, make sure I didn't forget something. Nope, okay. Plans from last time, just to give you a quick update. So I was going to try to finish my quilt top, get it all assembled. I was going to try to take Tulip Festival and get the FFO done. And I think I listed a couple of cross-stitching, you know, things that I was gonna work on, projects. Scrap it all, all of it. <laughs> I didn't do, I didn't work on anything <laughs> that I said I planned to do. And so I'm thinking I may not talk about plans anymore. <laughs> 
it may just be a surprise each time when I show you what I had been working on rather than me trying to plan. I just felt a different mood and it took me in a different direction and I'm okay with that. But it changes things from me telling you what the plans were. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on that. Also, I planned to do things, but with the wrap up of a busy season and then Jeff being home, it wasn't, you know, it's not my usual schedule and being able to work on things as I think about them. The other exciting thing I wanna share is I'm planning my next Floss Tube Live. We are going to do that this Friday, which is Friday, April 29th. 2022, <laughs> I am going to go on live at 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is the same as I did the first time I did this. So I hope that you can join me. If you can't, don't worry, because I will ha make sure that that video is posted and you could watch it as you would any other time with a quote, normal <laughs> floss tube video. And at the floss tube live, I am going to have a very special guest and it's not Jeff. And that's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so like I said, hopefully you'll tune in. And oh, one more piece of information about that. I will share with you as I talk about my next item on my outline. So the next thing I want to talk about is my Ukrainian piece jar. And as a reminder, this says Mir, which is Ukrainian for peace. And I'm supposed to be filling this with pennies. As you can see, I don't have any pennies in there yet. I just have not gone and actually gotten pennies so that I can fill this jar. I need to Put that on my list now <laughs> but i'm still keeping track of everything so i can give you an update on that so how this ties to my floss tube live is for everyone that joins me this friday for the live i'm gonna put 10 pennies for each person into my collection jar so that if you're keeping track that's the same as every new subscriber that I get. I also add 10 new pennies. So if you have a chance to tune in, please do so on Friday. Now for the update on my Ukrainian peace jar. Uh, as a reminder, I'm collecting for every comment, I add a penny to the jar. Like I said, every new subscriber, I add 10 pennies to the jar and I had uh, someone send me uh, some additional money that I have added to the total. And I'm collecting this and then I'm going to donate all these funds to World Central Kitchen for their relief efforts in the Ukraine. So I think that catches you up and I'm continuing to do this. So please comment to your heart's content. <laughs> Even if it's multiple comments, I count them all. <laughs> and I have several people that will leave me, you know, three or four comments right in a row of different things. <laughs> and thank you for that. And thank you for everyone who's commented and participated. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you. You helped contribute to filling this jar that's not filled yet, but will be. <laughs> so to give you the numbers, and I have to look at my notes because I can't remember these off the top of my head. For, since last time when I reported, um, I had 201 comments that went towards this jar. So that's a $2 and a penny going in here and I had 30 new subscribers. So that's $3. The amount we had last time for running total was $26 and three cents. And now with 
the 201 comments and the 30 new subscribers since last time, I now have a total of $31.03, all because we're commenting on my video. That blows my mind <laughs> that we could have that much that quickly and we can continue to do it. So like I said, penny per every comment, and that includes when I respond back to you, which I try to reply to everyone's comment. That adds to the jar also. Up next, I would normally talk about any FFOs that I have. Well, wah, wah, I don't have any this time, <laughs> even though two were in my plans. Remember the scrapped plans? <laughs> So since I don't have any FFOs myself, I thought this was the perfect timing to include my Penny Spotlight for this video. Penny Spotlight, as a reminder, is when I have one of our friends out in the Stitchy community that are willing to share, or want, I should say, want to share, their beautiful projects. And what I love about this is that I get a chance to get to know some more people, first of all. Second of all, I love to be able to share other people's work too, that who may not have floss tube or don't want to have a floss tube, but they have beautiful work. And I think we all enjoy seeing that. I also enjoy the variety that we can get where I mostly, or I think I've only stitched on linen since I've gotten back to stitching, but there are a lot of people that prefer Ada and have just as beautiful of stitching. And so it's fun to see variety like that. That of course is only one example. So today for Penny's Spotlight is Leanne and right here and down below in the description box, I'll have her Instagram name and you can follow her over on Instagram if you like. But I would say, yes, definitely check her out because she has beautiful projects for you to enjoy seeing when she shares them. And her first project, here's the chart picture, is a, and before I go any further, I apologize, I will be reading her notes that she sent to me, so I'll be looking down a fair amount. <laughs> so I hope that doesn't bother you too much. So her first project, like I said, is a free chart from Puntini Puntini. Did I pronounce that right? I'm not sure. <laughs> I hope I did. And let's see, I'll make sure you can see that. And now I'm gonna show you her full finish and get that up here while I read her description and notes. So she's telling us that she started this on New Year's Eve as part of the 12 and 12, which was the 12 starts over 12 hours on New Year's Eve that you saw many people participating in. She finished the stitching on January 2nd. Actually, and maybe she did her full finish on January 2nd too. It, I can't tell for 100%. She says she finished it on January 2nd. She said that she stitched it on a light gray Lugana. She believes it's 28 count, but the fabric was inherent, inherited and was not labeled. So she cannot say exactly the color or count. She used the DMC colors that were listed in the chart. And she finished it in a metal Christmas decoration that she found on clearance at Walmart. We love finding clearance cool pieces to use for our finishes, don't we? <laughs> and she used some fabric she had on hand as she's trying to use things that she already owns rather than constantly buying more. What's that like, Leanne? <laughs> I say that, but I do try to use a lot of what I have, and sometimes I just can't find the right piece or part. Not that I've been doing much full finishing lately anyway, <laughs> but I digress. 
Let's see, so yes, okay. So that was her description on how she finished that all up. Isn't it cute? I just love it. And I'm sorry, Leanne, I can't remember. Are you going to be hanging that as an ornament or is it more of like a, sort of like you sit it on a table or a desk? I don't remember and I'm sure you told me at some point. So if you want to leave a comment down below and then everyone can see that. All right, on to her next piece. And here's the chart picture. And she says for her second stitch, she wanted to showcase a design that she did for her Ivy Girl. And for those of you that don't know, yep, and I wanted to make sure, yes, Ivy Girl, as she's affectionately known, is Leanne's first grandchild. Ooh! So, I get excited about that too. <laughs> the chart is from Stitches Lovers Shop on Etsy. And, you know, I will have down in the description box below, I'll have Leanne's name there with her Instagram name, and I'll try to get the, at least the designer names down there for you under um, her name so that you can go and find these things if you'd like. Let's see. Okay. The chart is from Stitches Lovers Shop on Etsy. And the designer is from Ukraine. And she has so many beautiful charts, Leanne tells me. <laughs> and is now sharing with you. So I'll definitely work to make sure and get her down below if you want to go check her out. And now I'm going to show her finish. This feels really clunky today. I apologize. <laughs> uh, she says that she began the stitch in the summer of 2021. And she finalized it after Ivy was born with all of her birth details. She stitched it on 28 count Monaco. And it was a first, the first time she was stitching on this fabric. And she was really pleased with her results. And I can see why, right? It looks so good, it's so cute. She used the called for DMC colors and she framed it herself with a frame that she purchased at Michael's. And I'm going to show you one more picture of the finish with the cute little Ivy girl in the picture. And she says that it sits proudly on Ivy's dresser next to her change topper. And she likes to look at it as she gets changed, which you can see in the picture. Isn't that so cute? So thank you, Leanne, for sharing all of that with us. And I hope everyone enjoyed seeing those. And if you have, First of all, you can go follow Leanne and leave her comments there. You can also leave comments down below for Leanne and she'll be sure to see them. And if you're leaving comments down below for Leanne, those count towards the penny jar for Ukraine. All right, up next, I'll talk about myself again. <laughs> So I have several finishes to share. Up first is hands-on design, let's talk stitching. I did the smaller one, which of course, I don't know if you can see it, maybe a little, because I have the kit for this bag and that's how I'm gonna finish it, or well, fully finish it. And let's see, let me grab my board here. And then I can give you all the details for how I stitched it. So here's my finish. As you can see, I did not stitch on dark fabric. 
So I changed the color for the wording. So my fabric that I used is 32 count vintage stormy night. And I stitched this two floss threads over two linen threads. The color I used for the words is Classic Color Works Black Coffee, one of my favorites. Everything else is called for colors, except for a couple of details. The metal on the scissors and the hoop key, I swapped out and used DMC 645, which was a darker gray color. Otherwise, it wouldn't have shown up on my fabric. The other thing that I changed in the chart was the hoop itself in the chart is to be the same color as all the wording. So in the chart, all the wording is white on black fabric. And so I decided to... I didn't want my hoop to be almost black like the words. So I used, uh, yep, I do have it written down, DMC, DMC 841 to make it look like a wooden hoop, I guess. Otherwise, everything else is called for. And I added my initials and the year and I love so much how that turned out. It's like it's part of the design. So I'm really happy with that. So that's my finish. And this was really fun to stitch. And let's see, oh, and I have a picture. So here's a better picture of the bag. And my bag's probably gonna look really close to that. I plan to make these little X quilt blocks because I think they're awesome <laughs> with a stitching bag. And I'm I'm hope, hoping that I'm going to get that bag made this week. And so hopefully I would be able to show it to you um, on Friday at the Floss Tube Live. But remember what I said at the beginning? I need to not ever say what my plans are because <laughs> they were scrapped last time. <laughs> my next finish, and actually, all so I have three more finishes. All three of them, I was working on getting them done so that I could do the full finishes in FFO Mania. The hashtag is down below so you can see exactly how I spelled it. If I remember, I'll put it here on the screen too. And if you would like to join me, I would love that. <laughs> I have so many starts and whips already, and I have a ton of stitched finishes. I think I need to use my mania for doing full finishes, and that's where I came up with the idea. And I will talk a little more about that later. So my next finish to share is Jump Into Spring from Jeanette Douglas. All right, so that's the chart. I used all the called for floss. I stitched this on 32 count. Sorry, here's my finish. <laughs> I stitched this on 32 count. It's gingham or barn check. It's called different things. It's gray and white originally. I used instant antique spray to dingy it up, grunge it up, distress it so that it wasn't so brightly white and gray. And I stitched two floss threads over two linen threads, or, well, this isn't really linen. 
to fabric threads. <laughs> and like I said, all the called for colors. Isn't it awesome? I had so much fun stitching all four of these. Um, all four have these three rows of specialty stitches and they're different on each one. This one, I particularly love the specialty stitches used to create the basket. I just had so much fun doing it and I think they're so cute now that they're done. Well, they're done stitching. <laughs> so that leads me into my next finish. which is Soar Into Summer from Jeanette Douglas. So this one completes the set of four. There's Fall Into Autumn, Cozy Into Winter, Jump Into Spring, and Soar Into Summer. And I have now finished all four with the stitching. All four were stitched on the 32 count gray and white gingham that I treated with the Instant Antique Spray. I stitched all of them using two floss threads over two fabric threads. And like I said, I pushed to get this fourth one finished so that I can include all four of these in my FFO Mania. And I'm gonna be able to fully finish all four of them at the same time. So isn't that beautiful? I love the colors in this one, it's really fun. And I love the pinwheel specialty stitches and I love doing the specialty stitches, but I think this is called Bar Bargello, Bargello, I don't know how to pronounce it, down here at the bottom. And it took a lot longer than I expected it to take. It was still fun to do, but it just took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. You know, you're going to work on that row and you're thinking, oh, well, that's a few stitches, it's not, gonna take all that long. Oh no, it takes a little while. <laughs> but isn't that gorgeous? I can't wait to get, so all four of them, I plan on uh, pin pillow finishes. And I think all four of them will end up with some sort of a fabric border down here, whether I just keep this gingham or I add accent fabric, I'm not sure, but uh, that's how I plan to fully finish all of them. And hopefully it'll get done in FFO Mania and then I can finally really start to enjoy these. All right, number four finish is, it's called Springtime Cottontail from Teresa Kogut. It's in this issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, which is spring 2021. So this was about a year ago that this one came out. And I fell in love with it. And I'll show you why here. Okay, there we go. So I used all the called for floss colors. The fabric is Sorry, I set my notes out of reach here to see. Okay, it is 32 count winter brew from r and and I stitched two floss threads over two linen threads. And okay, so back to why I fell in love with this. I fell in love with this because I really liked how it was on a neutral fabric and a majority of the stitching is in pretty neutral colors. And I just really fell in love with that look. And then the three accent colors that are in there are just beautiful. So this was really fun to stitch. Another one that I would say it took longer than I expected, but that's okay because I enjoyed every stitch. The other thing, and it appears to me that it's showing up really well, I hope that while you're viewing this, it shows up really well, is the design in the bunny. When I was first stitching that, I'm like, I don't know if that's really gonna show up 
because the two floss colors are so close. And as I kept stitching and stitching and filling in the bunny, because I did all these sort of quilt black designs or quilt star designs all in the bunny first, and then I just went back and filled them in. And as I kept filling in, I was so surprised and excited that you could really see the design. It really stands out. And I, that was one of the reasons I loved this chart. So I'm really happy with the finish. And for a full finish, it's on deck for FFO Mania. Again, I promise more a little later here, I'm gonna explain it again. And hopefully it'll make more sense. I think that I wanna sort of frame this, whether it's in a regular frame or maybe it's a piece I find at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something where I can mount it so it sort of looks framed. I think you understand what I mean probably. That's my plan for it because I just think with the border around it and every, I don't, it just lends itself to that sort of a finish. So that is my plan right now, but I need that finishing piece to put it in. <laughs> so my idea might change before I get there. All right, on to next item of business. I just want to talk to you about hashtag pennies pep talk. I'll put that here. It will also be down below in the description box. And I really, I'm looking to remind you that I'm available. <laughs> if you would like some encouragement for getting a project done, maybe you're close and you just can't get yourself fully motivated to pick it up and get it done, or Maybe there's something new you wanna start and you just haven't done that yet. Or maybe you have quite a bit to go and you're just feeling kind of in a slump and you want to get it back out, but you're just needing someone to help encourage you to get it, get it out. I am so happy to help with that. It's one of my favorite sort of communication things on Instagram in particular is to sort of cheer everybody on. Or, well, when I get the chance, I should say. <laughs> so if you would like a Penny's pep talk, you can use the hashtag in the comments below and leave me a comment. P.S. The comment counts towards the penny jar for Ukraine. If you'd like to email me, you're more than welcome. My email address is below in the description box. Or you can find me on Instagram. You can message me there, or you can put a post up and hashtag it, Penny's Pep Talk. Whatever works for you, but I'm more than happy to try to cheer you on if there's something you would like help with. Up next, we are talking collection. <laughs> If you remember from last time, or, so this is a reminder, or if this is the first time you're joining me, I'll explain a little of the backstory on why I'm particularly giddy about collection. <laughs> I made sort of a, an agreement, I guess, with myself, but also with Jeff, that I was going on a spending freeze for the first three months of 2022. And I did it, I accomplished it. Just as a reminder, that did not, but the spending freeze did not count any subscriptions I had or pre-orders that were outstanding because I couldn't control when those came in. Uh, but so those didn't count and I didn't wanna lose my subscriptions. So I made sure <laughs> to keep those coming. So it's pretty excited. So as a reminder, last time I was off to do some shopping and I, I did some. <laughs> so I wanna share that with you. The first thing I did, I went on Etsy and I bought charts from three Ukrainian designers. And 
I'm going to list them down below. I'll read their names off, but I know for me, it's hard if I hear someone say the name and then uh, how do I find them or did I hear the name right? So like I said, I'm going to have them listed below. In fact, I will have links to their Etsy shops for each of the three that I'm going to mention. Now, if you have found other Ukrainian designers that are out there, would you please share those with me? Uh, leave me a comment down below in particular would be helpful. And that gives us some extra benefits. One, it's another comment, so another penny for the jar for World Central Kitchen. <laughs> if you leave me a comment, right? Also, then I would have the opportunity and anyone else that wants to look at the comments in my on my video, they can also find the names of Ukrainian designers. I felt like it was almost hard to find them and know that they were Ukrainian designers. So um, I'm hoping that we can all help each other for any of us that want to try to help support that way by buying some cross-stitch charts. All right, so my three people that I've I ordered charts from was um, X cross stitch pattern X so that's their whole name like I said down below and then you can see it and you can even click on the link to get to her Etsy shop the next one was 2x2 stitch art again linked below and the third one was Stitchy Princess. And again, I linked her down below. So if you have a chance to go check them out or you would like to, please do so. And let's help them out. They all had so many designs that it was hard for me to even narrow it down to not buy everything. So. Like I said, you could go check that out. On to, and please share if you know of other Ukrainian designers. So let's see, I'll start with the boring stuff. <laughs> it's not boring, but so, but it's my subscriptions. So it's things that I've been getting anyway. I got my April floss pack from Southern Stitchers Co. and it's classic color works. Here's the colors. Oh, and you can even see them in the bag. That's cool. So really fun spring colors. And I would say several of these I would never buy unless it was called for in a chart because they're not my typical colors. But they still look so good all together and I want to do a project and with them. The other subscription I got, and I gotta think everyone has this by now. So this is Color in Cotton. If you haven't gotten your April Club packs from Color in Cotton and you don't wanna see, look away. And I'll try to tell you when I take them or pull them back down, <laughs> if that helps. So the first thing is I am doing the 40 count linen, um, new, neutral, I think it's called neutral. And let me pull it out of the bag. You're never gonna see the color very well on camera. I just have to accept that. It is called pompous grass and it's kind of a green I It's beautiful. Let's just say that, it's just gorgeous and I can't wait to stitch something on it. I need to get through FFO mania and start some new stuff. <laughs> and then I get, I have to look at the card so I can tell you the right things. So I get the all colors 10 pack and that's what these two packs are. It's the all colors 10 pack, aren't they fun? Oh, that, this is also on my to-do list is to um, find a, a project that I can kit up and 
I'm gonna do a color and cotton substitution for it. I should have enough different variety of colors now that I've gotten the club several times to be able to do a project and use all color and cotton. And I will probably try to use color and cotton fabric too. I think that'd be really fun. <laughs> I'm getting really sidetracked. Okay, and then this is the Primitive Neutrals five pack. Up next on my, should I call it my collection enhancement extravaganza? <laughs> I saw this piece of fabric on kittenstitcher.com and I couldn't order it fast enough. It is called Green Velvet from XJU Design. I think you can see it pretty good. I, this is a 40 count linen, green velvet, XJU design. Anyone familiar with Michigan State Spartan Green? This is your color. I, which is, green is my favorite color and this is one of my very favorite shades. So. I don't know what I'm gonna stitch on it yet. I will find something. And I just, I, like I said, I just fell in love with it. It's so beautiful. So during my spending freeze, one of the things I did was I have this journal that I keep near my sitting, sitting spot, stitching spot. And when I see something that I really like, um, and I do this not just during the spending freeze, I do it all the time, but I'll write it down in there. And so I sort of have an ongoing list of the things that I think I really like, but I also can refer back to that list because I can't possibly purchase everything I love. I'm doing a really good job of trying to, <laughs> but I can't. So here we go. I'm gonna go a little faster than I would normally do because there's a few here. <laughs> so. Here's one of my first and one of my favorites. I think it's just one of everybody's favorites. So A Heart Remembers from Blackbird Designs. And when I got this book, I wanna stitch everything in it. So, and see, I can't help myself to stop looking at it even right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Moving on is the Brenda Gervais and with the needle and thread portion of the collection haul. And this one is the rabbit and the rose and I've seen several people have stitched it. I apologize for the glare, I'm doing my best here. Um, I've seen several people stitch it already. Oh, it's so cute and I can't wait to make it. Then I also got Keeper of the Pins, love every one of these also. Can't wait to stitch them all. And I got Seasons of the Heart, and I love these. Love, love, love. And so you get all four in this book. So these are gonna get kitted up pretty soon too, because I just, I love them. I'm gonna say I love everything I, pull up here. So I apologize if it gets overwhelming. <laughs> this is Hello from Liz Matthews, Berry Patch. And I wouldn't have considered myself a bunny person, but I seem to keep buying bunny things now. <laughs> I guess it's the time of year. <laughs> I also got the sticker set to go with it because I think that is super cool and I will use it on my, I have sort of a journal. I'll have to share that sometime. It's probably similar to Book of Days. Uh, I just started doing it this year, but I'll probably put a few of those in there. So yeah, I love this one. Can't wait to stitch it. And here's another bunny, Kathy Barrick. <laughs> Spring Pin Drum. I love this and I will definitely do it as a drum. So I need to get 
the pieces and parts collected so that I can do that once I stitch it. So I'm gonna have quite a collection of bunnies for springtime when I get through them all. Then this one is Queenstown Sampler Designs. And for anyone who doesn't know, well, at least in my family, we pronounce this name Malin. And I'm gonna guess that a majority of people have never even heard that name. And certainly, yeah, I, I know that's the case. That was my father-in-law's name. <laughs> I had never heard it until I met him. And the fact that a boy stitched this also made me fall in love with it, but it had Malin's name on it. I definitely needed it for the collection and Jeff agreed as it was for his dad. So when I stitch this though, I am going to change I'm gonna convert some of the colors because Malin's favorite colors were black and red and I want that reflected in here. And I'm also going to do something with the name to reflect our Malin and his year of birth and date of death while still maintaining Malin Schuler's name on this chart. So I'm really excited about this one. That's more of a long-term project. It's not something that I'm gonna do right soon, but we'll get there. It's definitely something I needed to have in my collection though, with the name Malin on it. I got a, tis a tisket, a tasket, a book of stitched baskets from Needlework Press. And there's just some fun, cute things in there. All right, now the Teresa Kogut portion of the program. And I have to tell you, so I watched her Nashville video of what, you know, what she was releasing at Nashville. And I saw the picture of this sampler in the Let Love Rain book. And let me see if I can pull it up really quick to share. Yes, I think I, well, yes I can, cause I won't, I'll hold it this way so you can't see the chart that's beside it. When I saw this the first time, I almost lost my mind. Ooh. I love it so much. I love the words on it. The only thing I don't love is how blue it looks in some cases, and that's not usually my jam. But the called for color, I think, is not as blue as it shows up in the pictures, which excites me very much. I mean, I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head what color it is, but there's the front of the book. And like I said, this does not look as blue when you see the actual floss color. The other thought I had was that I could substitute a color that was a little less blue. Um, and still it would look really good without changing everything else too, so. And I like, I think every, everything in this book I love. <laughs> I also got Flurry. Okay, so let's just shorten this up. I think I bought, yes. So she released five booklets. Yes, I have them all, okay. Like I said, Teresa Kogut portion of the program. But I was just so excited about all of these. So like I said, here's Let Love Rain, Flurry, and there's several of them in here. I just, I really, I don't know, I love them all. I just need to stop trying to tell you. 
Gather is also one of the books. Love Lives Here. Look at that one with that giant bird. Oh, it's so cool. So I need, to, I need to stitch that too. And Thoughts and Dreams. I love them all. And then, because, you know, five books of Teresa Kogut isn't quite enough, I also bought Love is the Key. And look, more bunnies. <laughs> like I said, I wouldn't have considered myself a bunny person. I sure did buy a lot of them. And have been stitching them. Like I said, I think it's the time of year. I think this is so cute. It is much bigger than I realized from the picture. And maybe you're a better judge of that when you see things. It is 273 by 193. So that is something I definitely want to stitch someday. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, my Nashville releases that I bought. These other items, last few here, are just things that I wanted to collect that I had seen at some point or another and wrote it down and went and found them. <laughs> So Blackbird Designs, My Dear Hearts, and I, I just love it. I just love it. I love the little hearts on it and I just love everything about it. So this will probably get stitched pretty soon. And then there is also, it shows this, which is, is it a chart in here? A separate chart? I don't remember. Yes, yes it is, but it is from pieces of the sampler. And I love that too. So, so that's on my list that I'd like to stitch pretty soon. I got, and I'm not sure how old this is. Oh, it says February, 2019, so it's not that old. Um, Heartstring Samplery F is for friend. I just think that is so cute. Love it. Love, love, love it. And then I bought a few older charts from Plum Street Samplers. And I mean, I found them on Etsy. So I think if you really like them and you didn't know they existed either, you could go find them on Etsy, I think. Um, this first one says copyright 2007. And I don't remember who showed this. Someone showed this. And I don't remember if it was a floss tube or on Instagram. But I went to find out exactly what it was, where it was, and if I could buy it. I love it. I love that peacock on the pumpkins and I love the border. So you can see that's Plum Street Samplers Grim Gourds. Now, as a note, it is charted at NPI. It also has a DMC conversion. I will probably do my own conversion of some fancy flosses, I think. I don't know. Once I kit it up, I'll decide for sure. Then when I went to order that, and you know things can't travel by themselves, right? So the shop I was ordering this from um, had a few others because it couldn't travel by itself. So here is Plum Street Samplers, A Lady's Trim Keep. And I just I love this. I think it's so cute. It looks very Halloween to me. Like I feel like she looks more like a witch than a lady. But maybe if I pulled the colors, I wouldn't think that as much. You never, the pictures never do things justice, right? And let's see, this says 2013. So that one's a little newer than the other one. So I think that's really cute. And then, oh, 
fell in love with this. And this is from 2012. Maxim and Zoya from Plum Street Samplers. And I'll try to bring it closer. Look at those peacocks. Aren't they cute? Can't wait to stitch this. I just think it's so fun. And I don't think it's very big. Nope. 98 by 106 is the stitch count on that one. So that would be a pretty quick stitch, I think. Relatively quick. Okay, Our, was that enough enabling <laughs> for my collection tour? I mentioned FFO Mania several times. Again, hashtag will be down below. And this is my plans for Mania. Like I've explained before, I have a number of finishes and I just, I need a little Penny's pep talk <laughs> to get some FFOs done. I just need a little extra motivation. And I felt that doing an FFO mania was a way better use of my time than a bunch of new starts because I still have several starts from last year from mania that are still in the whip bin. And probably a lot of them only had one day of a start on them and that's where they've been since. And I want to get some more things fully finished so I can have them on, dis on display and I can enjoy them all the time. So if you would like to join me for FFO Mania, please do. Let's all help each other get some more of these full finishes done because we I know most of us have bins or baskets or drawers or something that you're holding on to your finished stitches that need some full finishing. And I asked on my last video um, if people would like to participate in FFO Mania or what their plans might be for Mania. And I heard from several people that they plan on joining FFO Mania. So I'm very excited about that. And I had several who said, no thanks for mania. My life is crazy enough <laughs> and I can appreciate that. And every time I saw some comment that was similar to that, it really made me laugh. <laughs> and then there were some people that said you were gonna be I feel like this, I didn't count the exact numbers, but I feel like this was kind of the smallest number of people that were going, I'm calling it in quotes, traditional with their mania in terms of they're gonna have multiple starts. Now that might be one per week during the month of May. Uh, I don't remember, that's what I remember hearing people say in terms of their kind of number of new starts and that they would then give each new start like a week's worth of time of stitching time. So my FFO mania, I told you last time that I hoped to have more of a plan. I don't like using that word now since I scrapped everything from last time. I was going to have a list and a goal of how many hoofful finishes I'm hoping to complete during my mania. So what I did was I have a stack of index cards here. <laughs> Each index card has a finished stitch on it. And if I have a an FFO plan in mind or have the stuff and have it together, I have that noted on here. I also have blank space for those things that I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Or maybe I have a partial idea and I need to get some things for it. So I, that's why I made a card for each of the full finishes. Then I can make notes, whether it's how I intend to fully finish it or what the size is, maybe ideas that I have for the full finish, even if I haven't decided on it yet, 
just things like that so that I could keep track of it and because there's a few here. <laughs> I'll tell you how many. I have 30 index cards in this pile. And at least two of them have multiple full finishing projects on them. For an example, I have one index card for the four Jeanette Douglas designs that I showed you the two finishes I had earlier in the episode. <laughs> so can I get all of these done in the month of May for Mania? I don't know. It's pretty lofty, especially given the fact that I don't have a card for it, but I would love to get my Stitch Pink Cured Celebration Quilt the top all assembled. So I have my cards, so I'm somewhat organized. And I'm, the other reason I did cards, okay, this is the other reason I did cards. One, I could keep track of everything, but two, I can shuffle these up or I can rearrange what order they're in fairly easily. So I feel like that's kind of an easier way for me to plan maybe to prioritize, you know, maybe 25 of them are more important than the other five to get done in the month of May. Um, or if I just want to plan, you know, maybe I'm busy one day and I know that I won't have a lot of time to work. Maybe I need to plan to do two finishes on one day to make up for not being able to do one on another day or however it works, but so my schedule is still kind of flexible. Like I have everything noted here, but I can be flexible with how I schedule it out. Does that make sense? It feels organized. Now, whether or not that gets everything done, I don't know, but there's several finishes I have fully planned. I have the pieces and parts. All I have to do is do them. <laughs> so. We'll get there. All right. I want to share, I have one whip to share that I haven't actually finished, but I'm really close. And let's see. So it is Berries in Bloom from Hands on Design. This is a free chart that's on her blog, I think it is. Um, if you go to her website, you can, you can find it. I did my own floss conversion. I'm stitching this on 28 count. Yeah, okay. 28 count affogato from Fiber on a Whim. I did my own floss conversion. So I think of the three reds, only one is a called for red. The other two I substituted colors that I personally liked better. The brown is called for, the white is called for, and the three greens are my own conversion. But I, it's turning out really, really cute. And all I have left are the little branches that I gotta put you know, all the way around the wreath. And one of the reasons I'm working on this is I want to include it in FFO Mania, which by the way, it is one of the cards, even though it's not technically finished yet. I have, and I'll put a picture here, the kit from Simple Stitches Fabric Shop to turn this into a patchwork pillow. And I would like to do that as a full finish in FFO Mania. I'm having Floss Tube Live on Friday, April 29th, 2022, and it will start at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, provided I get it working at that time. It may take me a few extra minutes like it did last time. Hopefully it works a little more smoothly. <laughs> but like I said, Friday, April 29th, 2022, 
at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. For each person that joins live, I'm going to add 10 pennies to the penny jar for Ukrainian peace. So I hope you can join live. If you can't join live, you can still leave. You First of all, it will be on my Floss Tube channel and you can watch it as you would normally watch a Floss Tube episode of mine later on when it's convenient for you. And you can leave me comments on the video to contribute pennies to the Ukrainian penny jar that will benefit World Central Kitchen. As a reminder, I have a special guest who is not Jeff that will be joining us. And I would also, I try to ask you a question or ask for some feedback with each video to help facilitate more comments. And this time I'm going to ask that you put in the comments below any questions you have for me that you would like me to answer on the Floss Tube Live. Now, if you're able to join live, you can also, you know, we'll have the chat working and you'll be able to ask your questions there too. But anyone that can't join live or you wanna give me a heads up, maybe it's something I need to look up or put together or gather to answer, um, please leave me a comment down below and I will make a list and I will be sure to answer all of those at the Floss Tube Live. All right, so if you can join me, it's Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you in advance for all the comments you leave me so that I can continue to add pennies to the jar. And I hope that I will get to see you this coming Friday. Have a great week.